All right, I confess. This is a very late unboxing video of the M1060. I've had these headphones for about a year and kept saying to myself that I'd get to it eventually. Well, my hand has been forced. Since I'm already doing the new M1070 and M1570 reviews, I thought it was well past time to officially unbox the M1060. Most unboxings are plain Jane, aren't they? You hear people tell you what's in the box and how much it costs and yada yada yada. Stuff, frankly, that you should already know if you're interested in the unboxing. On this channel, I refuse to follow the normal trend, for better or for worse. Let's just get to the point. The M1060 was among the cheapest planar magnetic headphones when it was introduced a few years ago. The only other place to get planar magnetic drivers was through Odyssey or Hi-Fi Man, where Odyssey charged frustratingly high prices for its products and Hi-Fi Man had repeated build issues. There is some disagreement about how Monolith got its start. Some say they stole Odyssey's designs of the LCD2, reverse engineered it, and produced the M1060. Frankly, Odyssey is rather upset about this, as are those who are big fans of Odyssey. Well, nobody knows if this is really what happened. Some aesthetic similarities aside, the LCD2 and the M1060 look nothing alike. They don't sound alike at all. The idea with player magnetic headphones is that they are allegedly better than dynamic driver headphones. Planars are supposed to have faster transients, more clarity, more soundstage than their dynamic driver counterparts. Maybe that was the case five years ago? I don't think that's the case today. In fact, I know that dynamic drivers, when done correctly, have similarly fast transients, clarity, and soundstage, and sometimes better than planar magnetic headphones, depending on which planar magnetic headphone you actually buy. Be that as it may, planars are certainly fun. They sound really good and smooth. There are a number of companies that now produce planar magnetic headphones. Odyssey, Hi-Fi Man, and several Chinese companies that basically share the same design. And then there's Monolith by Monoprice. Monoprice released the M1060 as its initial push into the Hi-Fi audio world. Monoprice wasn't particularly excited about it. In fact, the Monoprice higher-ups were convinced the M1060 likely would not sell very well. But it has. The M1060 was the first chance people got to buy rather cheap planar magnetic headphones. You had to go out and spend at least twice that much amount of money for a similar sound. Hi-Fi Men was around, of course, but their headphones have had a rather shaky history with build quality. I think they're still working through their problems. In any event, Monolith's M1060 is an interesting headphone. It's one of the goofiest looking headphones I've ever held. The headband is loosey-goosey and wobbles around. It looks like an old TV rabbit ears. The wood ear cups swivel endlessly, which can be very frustrating when you just want to pick up your headphones and put them on your head. Moreover, the initial batch of M1060s had driver issues. Some complained that the drivers had a buzzing sound, and others said that the drivers just plain old failed. Taking some feedback, Monolith tuned the headphones and released the M1060 version 2 in rather quick order. The M1060 has a closed-off sound signature despite it being an open-back headphone. The sound stage is about average. The bass is undistorted, that is true, but the mid-bass and the sub-bass do meld to cause some muddiness in that region. The mids are typically about one to two steps forward of the rest of the mix. They are not overwhelmed by the bass, but they do sound less clear than compared to the newer M1070. Notably, there is a peak around 5 or 6,000 Hz that brings out some harsh graininess in vocals, especially in female singers. The treble is very well controlled, though lacking some energy. Even at high volumes, the treble does not become harsh or ear-piercing. Unfortunately, the treble also sounds rather blunted, meaning orchestral pieces will tend to sound less clear and more muddy overall. The soundstage is the real issue, I think. Compared back to back with the M1070, the M1060 sounds, well, claustrophobic. The M1060 is not a claustrophobic sounding headphone, far from it, but it is noticeably less open sounding than the newer M1070 model. Lots of people try to compare the M1060 to the Odyssey LCD2. There was a lot of hype behind this. People were clearly eager to get the LCD2 sound at a fraction of the cost. But the M1060 is not the LCD2 knockoff. Monolith created its own sound signature, which is not a copy of the Odyssey sound. This does not mean that Odyssey is better or that Monolith is worse, it's just simply different. 
In my opinion, talking about which sound is, well, better sound, is entirely subjective. If you've never heard an Odyssey headphone or the M1060, then you have no idea what a reviewer means when they say that the M1060 is not like the LCD2. Consequently, I suggest finding a reviewer who provides specific information about the sound of the M1060 itself. In other words, a thorough review should provide exactly what the bass, bids, treble, and detail retrieval sound on the M1060. In that regard, you get a slight impression of the sound signature, though actually hearing it yourself is the only appropriate method of testing. The M1060 is an ugly duckling in the audio world, but it's still lovable, I think. You can modify it to your heart's content, indeed many people have. You can get that planar sound, fast transients and clarity at a fairly affordable price. The M1060 isn't the Hi-Fi Mansundara or LCD 2. It's something different in many respects. If you've only been experiencing dynamic driver headphones and are interested in trying and testing planar magnetics, then the M1060 is a good first option. It's currently $200 on Monoprice's website, which is frankly cheaper than many decent dynamic driver headphones. There are obviously cheaper planar magnetic headphones from Hi-Fi Man, we'll think of the HE400 series, but they have iffy build quality. Moreover, the M1060 is likely easier to modify than the Hi-Fi Man products, and there are modification kits currently available for the M1060. So, is the M1060 the Odyssey Challenger? No, not at all. And it doesn't need to be. It's merely a different direction, and a significantly cheaper one.